this. What? Um, did y'all hear about the uh, that beach well in Kihei a couple weeks ago? No. Did y'all read about that? Uh, I got I to gotta make an admission, uh, that was me. Sorry. I'd actually uh, took a nap on the beach and woke up and there was like a Pacific Well Foundation rescue team. Like, so they're open up and they're like, oh god, it smells like he's already decomposing. Oh my god. Oh man. And every time I tried to get up, there was like a grad student from Portland like shoving brine shrimp into my mouth. And that stuff tastes... Delicious, actually. <laughs> I was like, mm, you got any cocktail sauce? Like, this is great. And I would have said something sooner, but they were pouring water on me and rubbing my back. You know, okay, I'll go along with this. Some girl named Sheila was down there going, Oh my god, I think he was hit by a boat. He's got propeller marks all along his side. And I was like, Oh man, those are stretch marks, man. Come on. Don't be like that. And then the the team leader, his name was Todd, he gets on the radio and he's like, ah! He's like, uh, you may want to bring a bigger uh, truck. Uh, we tried to weigh him twice, he broke both of our scales. So, uh, yes, uh, Trish is here, uh, copy that. She's going to uh, check his blowhole manually for obstruction. And I was like, a blowhole? I was like, Trisha, I don't have a, oh God! It's like, so what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, keep doing it. Ah! <laughs> Started making these noises like, ooh, ooh. Ooh. she's like, oh my god, he's singing. This is why I do this. Nature's such a beautiful thing. But I'm a very lucky guy. It doesn't look like it, but I'm a very lucky guy. I'm married to a beautiful woman from the Philippines, and uh, I know when you're looking at me, it doesn't make sense to me either. When most guys propose, they use a wedding ring and a bended knee. I use a chloroform rag and a car trunk. I was like, yeah, you'll learn to love me. Stop hanging on the trunk, sweetie. Bakit sobra ng iya ka? Sobra malakas na? Tama na! That's for the Filipino audience. All, all both of you. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a pretty lucky guy. Um, and, uh, you know... <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of self-explanatory. Thanks. <laughs> Captain Obvious down here. <laughs> but uh, actually, uh, I kind of seduced her with my poetry. And I actually kind of I brought an example tonight that I'm just going to read kind of quickly. Um, this is, uh, this is kind of, I know it's a little mushy and romantic and everything, but I'm just going to do this real quick. Uh, she said this is the one that made her fall in love with me. So, uh, and this one's called, I Will Love You Forever and Ever. And ever, ever, and, and ever. ever. <sighs> when you're submitting Immigration Form 104F, make sure you submit all proper documentation. Make sure that all documents are included in the packet as you cannot resubmit this immigration form. You will realize as you get it notarized that all papers must be approved. It, it doesn't have a rhyming scheme to it, but it, you know, it, you know, it, it worked. <laughs> this is actually my second marriage. Um, I was married before back in Texas, and I got married when I was 19, which was stupid. Wow. Well, yeah. And uh, it was bound, it was bound not to work because of religious differences. Because I'm Protestant, and she's the devil. <laughs> oh well. And I didn't really realize anything was wrong until after the ceremony because she was an awesome girlfriend. But there was something about a wedding ring that just brought the evilness out in her. Because they're sitting there like, okay, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. I am Zylox! Kneel down and pay homage to my awesome power! Like, uh, do we need to cut the cake? Or? I will fish on your soul in the darkness. <laughs> I love you too, honey. <laughs> oh, crap. Just sinking in. Wow. I, had to keep a, I had to keep a bucket of holy water next to the couch at all times. She'd come in just... I was like, you'll let me finish the Cowboys game. You'll let me finish the Cowboys game. And then if it ever went into halftime, I'd have to bring the sacrificial goat out. <laughs> I'm like, look, man, if they don't make this go, hear it out. Ow. 
Yeah, it was horrible. But in all serious, in all seriousness, though, I actually saved her life twice. This is serious. The first time we were having dinner at Chili's and she started choking, and I gave her the Heimlich, and it was really cool. It, like cleared her airway. All the people in the restaurant were all clapping and everything. It was really cool. And I saved her life the second time when uh, I lost my nerve and put the knife down. Like I didn't have my rubber shoe cover, so I backed out. My wife and I uh, had a baby last week. This is absolutely 100% true. We had a crappy baby girl. Hey, it works! God help us. That surprised me too. That surprised me too. Well, we didn't have a baby. My wife had the baby. I just stood there with a Snickers bar going, oh, that looks painful. I was like, Doc, can you move? And, Stop screaming. Let me take a picture. Nice. <laughs> But uh, her last few months, she was miserable because she's kind of like a tiny girl and had, you know, enormous belly. And she told me, she goes, you don't know what it's like, Tiba. Always gassy, have to pee and poop all the time. You can't get comfortable or bend over because your belly's so big. And I said, hello. I said, I've been doing this for 10 years. She's like, you're an amateur, baby. And we have children, and uh, when you have children, you begin to learn why God made them so cute. So you don't kill them. <laughs> but before we had kids, our house was so neat and clean. It was like, well, a place for everything and everything in its place. <laughs> and then after you had kids, it looks like Toys R Us puked the yard sale all over your house. I swear there's so many toys on my floor, I've got scars on the bottom of my feet shaped like Lego people. <laughs> and I got all these little Play-Doh dingleberries all over the house. I'm like, yeah, that's nice. Good job. <laughs> but my three-year-old son, William, he loves to run around naked all the time. Anywhere, any place. He acts perfectly normal, and then all of a sudden it's like there's some silent bell in his head that just goes off, and he drops trout wherever he is. He's just walking around, it's like, ding! Your bike quiz knows all looking at us. <laughs> and honestly, I mean, when you see a guy that looks like me in public chasing a naked toddler, the authorities get involved every time. I'm like, oh, okay, man, here you are. I don't care, another routine. Like Chris Hansen standing in the corner getting ready to interview me. But uh, he's, he's potty trained. Well, he's, he's almost potty trained. He, uh, you can hear him echo all through the house when he's finished. He's like, Dad, come wipe my butt. And you make that walk of shame down the hallway. You go in there. You know, he's assumed the position and he's spreading east to west. Like, Thank you, Daddy. Oh, and that's who you are, man. You're daddy. You gotta do it. You just hang your you just hang your head down, hold your breath, and just try and do it as quickly as you can. And then sometimes if you're going too fast, you begin to wish they would make toilet paper thicker in the middle. Because I am tired oh, no. of slipping and poop does not wash off of a finger. <laughs> oh, you think it does, you're scrubbing your fingers till they're on, you're like, oh, okay, good, it's gone, you know? But it's never gone. It's like a phantom stench. It's gonna be back. Three days later, you'll be like, oh, oh my God, God, my Skittles smell like ass. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, y'all. You've been a great audience. Thanks. Yeah.